Hello there, Vic Benedict here. We're playing Dark Souls 1 on the PC. This is my walkthrough. We're now on the 39th installment to the Duke's Archives Part 2. So you're going to get the Archive Tower Cell Key by killing that man serpent. And how cool is that? Having got imprisoned after getting killed by Seath, they put you in the prison and then these man serpents uh, go up the stairs and don't even regard you. I'm not sure, but as we come down here, the key that we just got will open some of these doors and I think I might be going in a couple and we're going to be meeting up with a new enemy here called the, pa uh, the, the Pasaka so they give out 800 souls which is a pretty good amount for an enemy that goes down really quickly and um, sometimes the the kill isn't too easy to get because they have a spray, they have a grab they have that evisceration attack that they do but the lightning sword here at plus five is doing pretty well for us and we're en route to bigger and better things in the next video we will free big hat because his ass does need saving um, if you if you aren't sure who big hat is many videos back when we were in sense fortress we rescued somebody with a huge hat and he was in a, a cell and we, we rescued him. So we're going to be heading down here. There is um, some sort of a, a music player or a gramophone going on at this time. You don't have to interact with it. I, in fact, I think that it somehow attracts these guys. So I would just leave it alone for now. I don't even interact with it but there's a bunch of these guys down here. The key that we just picked up it does not open Big Hat's cell. We'll get that key from another uh, chest coming up. But this this chapter is, was so fun for me. The music is really intense. A lot of fun battles. Just such a fun, just challenging and rare game this is. So rare. And just a couple more of these guys and there is an item in Big um, Big Hat's cell as well. I won't spoil the surprise. But yeah, this is a really good weapon. I always feared this place when I first did my playthrough, especially the Seath boss, and I just did him earlier. And I'm just showing you that the door doesn't open with this key. Um, the run back to Seath is actually harder than Seath. Seath is a very easy enemy. So, we're going to climb the ladder and be greeted by some more man serpents up here. I think three. And it's a little difficult because it's difficult to aggro them uh, one by one. In fact, I don't think I've ever done it. So, we've got one mage and two guys with shields. So, it can be a little difficult. And I would recommend trying to go for parries although your repost is likely to get interrupted and if it doesn't you're in good shape because you're gonna get iframes um, otherwise you can go for backstabs um, you don't even have to come up here <laughs> remember that attack can't be parried we went over these guys extensively this is a fun enemy I don't think they get any additional hit points So, yeah, the, the Duke's Archives Part 2. We are heading to the the next bonfire, which will be the bonfire that we use to run to Seath the Scaleless. Remember, don't try to parry that attack. It, it will never work. That's a, that's a parryable attack right there. They're clearly weak to le electricity. What is this? Some twink? Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. You do need to come up here and get that. I thought it was twink. But now we're going to descend the ladder and use that key. Getting all the way back up here now. And we're, we're in possession of 13,000 souls. 
And remember the man serpents that ran past us earlier? We are going to have to fight those guys. And as usual, there are a bunch of hidden items over here, some in the cells, some on some ledges. But what invariably happens to me when I find myself in this place is that um, I'm doing combat on the ladder, and it usually doesn't work out. And we'll see how much it works out or how much it doesn't coming up. And now that I think about it, the gramophone downstairs, I think that's what attracts the Pasaka and causes them to... Um, to leave the room where they're at. But anyway, these guys are definitely wise to us, and I'm gonna try to hit them off. It just doesn't work though. I mean, look how ineffective it is. You would think, oh, he slid down. He like slid down and he slid through me. And now we, oh, look at this, I'm trapped. There's one above me and one below me. So what I think I'm gonna have to do, aside from trying to kick him, is open the door be grateful for the iframes because I'm sure he's gonna hit me and unfortunately we're gonna have some more undead crystal soldiers um, joining uh, this small mob because we've kind of extended our ourselves into this room now so yeah we got a parry nice we're spinning the camera for no good reason. And now we have an undead crystal soldier joining uh, joining the party. So yeah, look at that stamina penalty right there. And another thing too, when your stamina is regenerating, if you hold the shield it goes a lot slower. I didn't know that. I wanted to thank uh, Mike Gordon for bringing that to my attention. He's a long-standing subscriber. And I, I never, I never even knew that, but now I do know. So, and uh, a magic shield would help here if you want to. You can parry that attack. I'm not sure why. Parry that dick. Come on, or Dick. Come on. I guess my name is Dick Benedict since I started my name as Dick on this campaign. And then we should have an undead crystal archer over here somewhere. There he is. And, and then over to the left is going to be an ambush. A guy hiding in a corner. We all knew this guy would be there. There's, like, after playing this game for so long. There we go. Got a little parry for ourselves. And now we can focus on the crystal archer here. Okay, so those guys are dead. We're going to come up these stairs now. What am I doing here? I think I'm using a hum I'm using I'm putting some humanity in there. Okay. I may have anticipated taking a lot of damage over here, but we've got a channeler jumping for joy. Like look at these fuckers. Yeah. Jump for joy, bitch. And I think he teleports. So whether he goes, I don't know. That could be him, too. I'm not sure. I'll have to see his damage bar, see how much health he has on him. So the Crest Shield would help out here for absorbing this, uh, this magic and reducing how much health you get uh, dealt, or how much damage you get dealt. An undead crystal art, uh, soldier over here. Take him down. And then we've got some tricky maneuvering of the staircases over here. So, yeah, man, I hate the sword clashing off shit so much. We're going to come up these stairs. We're going to throw the switch. You may see an edit there because I think I was looking for items upstairs. So shield here and then turn it again. And then I think we're going up. Yeah, we're going up. And we should be greeted by an undead crystal archer. Here he is. Yeah, I was talking about the run back to Seath. Um, like when I first beat Seath, I was almost crying on my playthrough. I don't think I ever published as far as that, but I was almost crying because the run back is... To a new player, it's hell on fucking earth. But to somebody who's played the game a couple times, you quickly see like that it's a lot fairer than you thought at first. But here's a channeler up here. 
And he's just... Where, where is he going? I don't even know. Who gives a shit, I guess. But turn the crank. And then we're going to need to come down to this floor. Through this door, there will be an archer on the other side. And we are almost at that bonfire. So, at this point, you can run to Seath if you like. Oh, you'll need to pull this, obviously. It'll be a seek. Oh. You know what? Just fuck you. How did you even hit me from there? Like, I, I don't mean to get so mad, but that is a little uh, peculiar. You guys, take care.